Hi, I'm Amber. I'm a speech therapist at Seattle Therapy Skills for Life. In this video, I want to share a little bit about AAC. AAC stands for Augmentative and Alternative Communication, and it's any way that we communicate that is aside from our speech. So even writing or texting technically counts as AAC. AAC is something that can be used in place of speech, so for someone who doesn't talk at all. It can also be used to augment speech, to kind of add on or make more effective communication for someone who has some speech, but that speech is not sufficient to fully communicate across all environments and for all purposes. Examples of reasons that would be important could be, um, say for someone who has speech, but they're difficult to understand, and using AAC helps them clarify their messages or for someone who has inconsistent or unreliable speech. So maybe they can speak at some time but not others, or they speak but what they say does not always match what they mean. It can also be really helpful for someone who has speech but that speech is really um, energy expensive and talking takes so much energy that they then cannot devote that energy elsewhere, say to like doing their homework or playing with a friend. So let's look at some different types of AAC. There's a huge variety in systems, devices, and I want you to know that what I have here today is a tiny selection of that variety. Um, but here's what I'll show you first. So one category of AAC is speech generating devices. These are electronic devices that have voice output. So these are a couple of them, and when you hit the buttons on the screen, Hi. You can hear the voice. This is Touch Chat with Word Power. This is Grid Super Core. They're two of many different speech generating devices, and these ones are both on iPads. They can come on other devices as well. Speech generating devices have a lot of pros. So they are often what's considered robust. Robust means there's a big variety of vocabulary. There's nouns, verbs, adjectives, pronouns, grammar, and this is really important because no matter how a person is communicating today, you want their AAC system to grow with them and allow them to communicate the way they're gonna communicate in a couple years. This is especially important for someone who is using AAC as a primary form of their communication. Other advantages of electronic devices like these are access to early literacy and late literacy. So you'll see like on touch chat here, the keyboard is on the home page. Other devices like Grid have the keyboard embedded in other pages, but they all have access to typing. And typing unlocks limitless communication. So even if a person is communicating in symbols today, Having that keyboard there lets them start to learn to spell, and once they can spell, a person can communicate anything they want. They're not reliant on whatever is programmed into their system. One other, um, one other advantage is that electronic devices are generally really easy to customize, so you can add vocabulary really quickly, um, even like on the spot, and some even have functions where as you search for a word, like a word comes up that your person wants to say, you search for it and now it's on their device forever, so it allows for that word learning. I also want to show you some types of what we call low-tech AAC. So low-tech AAC is anything that's not housed on an electronic device, and there's a really wide range of robustness to low-tech AAC. Generally, they're not going to be robust, but they do have their advantages. Low-tech AAC is generally housed on paper. It's probably laminated, but that means that it's easy to transport, it doesn't matter if it rips, it doesn't matter if it gets wet, it's cost-effective, um, and can go to all the different environments. So one great way to use low-tech AAC is for someone who also has high-tech AAC, and they have a printed copy of that other ways you might use low-tech AAC is for someone who has a lot of speech, but they need something to supplement. So, for example, um, this booklet 
is a self-advocacy booklet that someone might use if something is wrong. It has body parts, feelings, maybe um, what they need to do, like call my adults or help me. So these are things that someone could point to in an emergency or a time of stress where their access to speech has diminished. Similarly, I have another self-advocacy booklet. This is from a great resource called Autism Level Up. It has little cards for give me space or stop talking. So again, for someone who typically has their speech, but in times of higher stress or dysregulation, they need another way to communicate. This is called a core word board. It has a lot of words. This is a great visual support. It's great for vocabulary learning. And you could point to it to make a sentence. So it's another great supplement to speech or to a high-tech AAC device. Thank you for learning a little bit about AAC today. If you feel like someone you know or your child would benefit from AAC, get in touch with a speech therapist and get that journey started.